do you have to say about the role of money in politics? Because this is something that is degrading the state, that is preventing progress, development, because much of that money comes from the state exchequer. It's not possible for MLAs to dig into their own private investments. So politics has changed. They have ruined their politics. It is difficult to get a real statesman mm -hmm. if money play a real Yes. Uh, issues yes. in winning election. Mm -hmm. Money power has ruined mm -hmm. the to get quality leaders yes. because those who really want to work for the state also it is difficult for them because they don't have money. Yes, yes. it is very tough nowadays. Mm -hmm. But still, we we should not lose hope. What is your thinking? Have you done any analysis of the reason for unemployment? Is it real unemployment? Is it disguised unemployment? In the past, we have seen too much uh, favorable by someone at the helm of affairs. Favoritism, to, favoritism, yeah, nepotism. To, to, to help the, mm -hmm. the their candidate candidates. enlarge their choices. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So sometimes deserving candidate, they don't have opportunity. Hello viewers. Today in Upfront, we have a very special guest. Ba Meral Bonds Im, who is the MLA of Nongpo constituency. He is um, a forward looking progressive politician, and we have been watching him in the assembly. He is perhaps one of the few MLAs who's taken up issues of women's safety and security in the workplace, uh, on uh, health issues, on the need for pediatrics uh, section in his uh, region, in the Reboy region. So welcome uh, uh, to this show. We would like you to tell us something about yourself that maybe the viewers would like to know. Thank you, Kong. It is my honor and privilege to be on this show. It's being moderated by you. I have high regard for you, for your contribution was journalism within the state as a whole. Uh, basically, I was born in the year 1980 in the village called Diwan, mm -hmm. right now through in Tribhoi district. And I pursue my uh, lower education in Diwan government LP school, then in St. Joseph uh, ME school that time in mm -hmm. Umden, mm -hmm. and then pursue my study in Shillong in class 6 in Mohar Christian High School. I uh, passed my metric SSLC mm -hmm. in 1996 from Mohar Christian High School. Then class 11 and 12 I did from Synod College. Okay. And then uh, after completing 12, uh, I have uh, tried for engineering. Uh, I went uh, in Guwahati, mm -hmm. but uh, God has different plan that after six months I came back. Okay. Then okay. I joined uh, BA in St. Edmunds mm -hmm. in 1999 till 2002. After completing my degree in sociology from uh, St. Edmunds, then I pursue my uh, master degree in Nehu. This is on sociology. Sociology, okay. yeah. Okay. 2002 to mm -hmm. 2004. Okay. Then uh, I am the third one among the siblings mm -hmm. of my father, late Dr. Jerin mm -hmm. and my mother, uh, Mrs. Jaya Siem. I have two brothers and one sister. Okay. And presently, I uh, my wife, uh, her name is Momina, and I have uh, a son, his name is Samuel. Mm -hmm. So this is okay. the background of my family. Mm -hmm. And God has been kind that after completing my master's in sociology in 2004, then uh, I had the privilege to work with one of the person, a personality, who have contributed so much uh, for the welfare of Meghalaya as a politician and he is none other than Dr. Didi Lopang. Okay. He is my mentor and I joined Youth Congress in 2004 itself mm -hmm. and started working very closely with him mm -hmm. till 
I had a privilege to be a candidate in 2018 through his blessing in disguise, through his blessing openly, and I won the election in 2000. But now he has shifted base to the NPP, and you're still in the Congress. Yeah, despite of <laughs> is he Is he still your mentor? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Balapan, before he's my mentor, now also is my mentor, and he will be my mentor forever, mm -hmm. because he has contributed so much towards my career, okay. apart from my parents. He's okay. the one who have shaped my career. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what's the future for you looking like? Uh, because you are still neither here nor there. Nobody knows which party you will be joining, and what will your pros prospects be in 2023? People are kept guessing, so would you like to share something or would you rather not share? Uh, in a vibrant democracy, uh, we have seen changes happen very now and then. It is unfortunate that has happened, let me be very frank, to the five Congress MLA who have stick with the Congress, including me. And then we have been suspended for three years and I felt to myself that this is God's plan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is not intentionally. I'm not leaving Congress till now. I'm still there, Congress, MLA, till now. On Congress. what grounds were you suspended? Uh, because uh, we joined the MDA government, oh, okay. where BJP also is a part of it. Mm -hmm. So we have tried to justify it with the party leadership. And one thing the viewers should know, whatever the five of us have done, it is in line, in consultation with MPCC and AICC. It's not that we are just doing like that. It is in consultation because we also, we love the party that we have won. We, we don't want to just jump ship from one party mm -hmm. to another. Mm -hmm. But circumstances arise in such a way that we have been suspended. And especially in my case, I will tell you, within three weeks, uh, I say one month, from the time we have been suspended, after one month, candidate has been declared in the oh. constituency. That From the Congress? On, yeah. Okay. On the 31st okay. of March 2022, the party high command and the state leader have come and already declared candidate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I felt that uh, maybe the party doesn't you're, need you're me You're not anymore. needed. Huh? Yeah, yes, something yes, like yes. that. Mm -hmm. So we don't know the mind of the leaders. Mm -hmm. So. I accept the whatever the party decide, whatever they have done for us. Still, uh, I am very uh, thankful to other party. So many party has approached. Uh, to mm -hmm. be very frank, UDP is. Uh, I am very close. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, we'll see in days to come. Mm -hmm. uh, most likely, uh, I have to consult with my leaders, with the electorate, with the electorate large, yes, especially yes. for the, the time is still there. Mm -hmm. At appropriate time, we will decide where to join. Okay. So, since you've joined the MDA government, uh, what position have you been given or is there any political position you've been given which helps you to reach out to the electorate better? Yeah, yeah. The so, uh, we joined the MDA government on the 8th of February 2022. Mm -hmm. Then soon after that, the Honorable Chief Minister, he has assigned different assignments to different MLAs. And I have been assigned as co-chairman in MIDC. Okay. Till okay. now also. Mm -hmm. So I am thankful to the Chief Minister, to the Cabinet. And being in the MDA government, it is like strengthening our shoulder mm -hmm. to help the people at large, the constituents, the needs, the developmental activities, uh, and so on and so forth. Okay, let me ask you this question. There's a lot of heartburn about the, the performance of the MDA government. There have been scams, there have been all kinds of things. The latest is in the police department. So will it not be a baggage for you to go to the people and having to explain all this, having to explain why you're joining a certain party that is a part of the government, will that not be you know, a baggage? See, I would say that it, it is a baggage. Uh, merit, demerit will always be there. If you will be in the treasury bench, 
merit demerit will be there you will be in the opposition when merit demerit will always be there in politics mm-hmm. we cannot just wash our hand that we will be this side we will be free from everything nothing so it's like a very fluid kind of situation yeah, yeah. in in politics uh, Kong, as far as i'm concerned in my short uh, uh, span career as an MLA legislator mm-hmm. in four and a half years mm-hmm. now i felt that uh, we should experience ourselves uh, then we should know because for four years we have more than four years we have been in opposition mm-hmm. yes. but if nothing happened to the congress party mm-hmm. i think by now we are still there yes and we are fighting for the cause of the people no mm-hmm. no doubt about that what do you have to say about the role of money in politics because this is something that is degrading the state that is preventing progress development because much of that money comes from the state exchequer it's not possible for mlas to dig into their own private investments so what do you have to say about this the involvement of the the money. role of money in in elections in and buying votes and see this is happening it is started happening if we compare the kind of leadership the kind of Uh, legislator the state has produced in the 60s in the 70s in the 80s and now there's a huge difference difference mm-hmm. you know better even in the floor of the house the kind of debate the yes. language yes. the motion or the resolution or any mm-hmm. issues that have been taken up uh, it is a huge difference now mm-hmm. you can see that because in the past we have seen i'm not saying that we don't need money we need money for election uh, for pol for publicity for days for that we need but we have seen in in the past 10 to 15 years in the last uh, one and a half decades politics election have changed changed totally changed where businessmen people who have lots of money they try to throw their luck by mm-hmm. contesting election mm-hmm. before they used to support somebody yes. good candidate but mm-hmm. now they, they want themselves. to try by themselves yes. Yes. this is the fact we have so what do now. you have to say about that because that is actually a conflict of interest you have a businessman a businessman politician who also has a construction company and gets all the contracts and then the roads are badly constructed it's a huge conflict of interest as far as the public is concerned so how do you feel about it and will you make that feeling public uh, this is an open secret everybody knows mm-hmm. i don't need to make it public everybody knows that now it is more than 50% more than 50% of the legislator they are businessmen but i'll tell i am not a businessman mm-hmm. to be very frank i okay. don't have any business background nothing i am mm-hmm. mm-hmm. a layman before uh, becoming a legislator a party worker God has been kind by the blessing of my parents, Balapang. Now I am Emily. I am trying to prove myself mm-hmm. as a legislator, not as a businessman. But with regards to many legislator who come from the business background and all, so politics has changed. They have ruined the politics. It is difficult to get a real statesman mm-hmm. if money play a real. Yes. Uh, it's yes. in winning election mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because pe- nowadays uh, we have seen at the ground in many constituency mm-hmm. they they have they had the people are used to that they have to get money before yes. getting to, yes. to go yes. on the polling day mm-hmm. so that is very bad mm-hmm. because uh, maybe we have to change this mm-hmm. uh, i i'm fully endorsed with the policy with the issue that we have to produce good statesmen yes. we have to go back where APHLC is the mm-hmm. they produce good leader quality leader yes. for the we cannot forget the act ethical that, politics that has been brought mm-hmm. into which has really protect the interests of the indigenous people mm-hmm. all this with uh, taking into consideration i felt that uh, money power has ruined mm-hmm. the to get quality leaders yes. because those who really want to work for the state also it is difficult for them because they don't have money yes, yes. it is very tough nowadays mm-hmm. but still we we should not lose hope yes, i'll yes. tell you they are constituency despite mm-hmm. many businessmen they come and throw money left and right but they won't win election i'll tell mm-hmm. you now there are certain pockets that people have 
understand. 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 Mm -hmm. Their constituency is different from one constituency mm -hmm. to another. But people have to understand that once you do good work, if mm -hmm. you don't have money also, you will win election. Yes. So who, who will be your biggest competitor this time? All are big competitor for me. The, uh, my opponent. No, between the Congress, NPP. Yeah, NPP have lots of money. Money. Yeah. Even Congress have lots of money. The president of the NPC now is a millionaire. <laughs> <laughs> He will but back he, up his he, he, he will not spend his money, no. To I don't know. <laughs> I don't know that because we have been throwing out of the Congress, so I don't know. The moment he took out as the president, we have been thrown out. So I don't know much. But uh, but he is uh, capable as NPP. Mm -hmm. I think. What about UDP? UDP has also been in the government for a long time. They also have been throwing money, you know. Uh, so maybe they'll throw money for you also. I don't know. I have not joined yet. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's come to more serious issues. What are the most critical issues for you in the elections 2023? We've seen all the indicators for our state, either by the Niti Aayog, by the National Family Health Survey. It has shown us to be very, very low in terms of education, in terms of health. We have 41% of households led by single women. And because you are very concerned with these issues, uh, what do you think is that one thing that needs to be done in the next government, whichever government is being formed? And I hope that you will be part of that government because you have so much to contribute. In fact, uh, we really need young legislators who have the courage of conviction to speak up, to bring change. See, uh, two important issues. Uh, health and education, these are very important issues in, the, in our society. We cannot deny uh, there is a time that the indicator in different sector, it's uh, quite okay. Now we have seen even education at the lowest, yes. the health also at the lowest. If we check at the IMR, MMR also, mm -hmm. we are above the national average. Yeah. So it is quite alarming. So, see, to bring the health sector at par with other states, so we have to go at the bottom of this. Mm -hmm. We have to understand, to look into. Now, it is of no use that infrastructure has been brought, but there is no equipment, there is no specialist, there is no mm -hmm. doctor, mm -hmm. there is no manpower, it's of no use. For example, I'll tell you with regards to uh, MCH, Modern Child Health. Mm -hmm. In Ribhoi district, the MCH hospital that should have come up long time back, just lying back and like that in Umran Yang mm -hmm. If that hospital uh, will take into shape and can function or inaugurate as soon as possible, it will help. Pregnant women could it yes. shall be referred in. Mm -hmm. We have seen civil hospital Lompo being a 100 bedded hospital. Yes, it, it is packed, especially during summer. Mm -hmm. Full packed with general patient, pregnant women, all at the same hospital. So we have to look into, a part of uh, bringing infrastructure, we have to concentrate on technicians, uh, technicians specialists, mm -hmm. uh, more doctors, more mm -hmm. nurses. We have seen in Meghalaya. Many non-bonded doctors also, they are just sitting idle like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, they have passed MBBS, but not from a recognized university mm -hmm. or maybe from outside India. Mm -hmm. They are just sitting like that. So, I always tell the concerned department that we should engage them also. Because many bonded doctors also in the past, they don't work anymore. Mm -hmm. So, we should bring back them yes, also. Yes. At the same time, the GNM and the paramedical staff, uh, all these technicians also, we need to boost up so that we could bring uh, changes in our health system. And more important is that the budget allocation for health has to be at the highest. It should be. Should Education be. and health. Health budget allocation mm -hmm. should be. There. Tell us something about this aspirational district. What does it imply and what yeah. advantages have you had by being a aspirational district. Yeah, Ribhoi has been regarded as aspirational district since 2018. Uh, 
by Niti Ayok, Government of India. What special uh, the, programs? The indicator that has been identified, health and nutrition, mm -hmm. education, mm -hmm. these are the two main. Okay. And then uh, drinking water, water supply and all. And few issues about uh, skill development to, to give support to women, weavers or farmers like mm -hmm. that. So in health section, uh, in the last uh, four, uh, four and a half years now, we have received support from mm -hmm. Niti Ayo in health sector, be it to get extra ambulance, to have uh, more infrastructure, extra building, mm -hmm. to have uh, extra facilities in labor room for pregnant women to give birth. Now, Riboy being an expressional district, uh, we have uh, started uh, that uh, the labor room has uh, been functioned even in South Center. Not before. Mm -hmm. Before, labor room has been conducted, delivery is conducted only in PHC and CHC and okay. civil hospital. Mm -hmm. But now, even South Center also, they have started. Mm -hmm. uh, to you had once babies. raised this uh, point about the Mohalla clinics, which yeah. I think is a very good idea if it can spread across the state. That's true. See, this is the model. Even personally, I visited Delhi. This is the model of the government of uh, Delhi mm -hmm. uh, by Am Admi Party. Where just uh, last three months also we visited mm -hmm. uh, the one Mohalla. You have area. given that suggestion to the government. Has the government responded no, in no, any no, way? No, no, yeah. no. Government has not responded anything. See, Kong, I'll tell you the advantages of this is that for the poor family. I'm not saying that at one go we can do mm -hmm. because it incurs a lot of financial yes. implication. Yes. We know a state, we don't have resources, mm -hmm. but special resources has to be enmarked for more likely. Let's start from Shillong. Let's start in district headquarters, Nongpo or Jowai or Tura. Mm -hmm. Let's start. Where around a population of 2,000, let's have one more likely. Mm -hmm. Where we can have free medicine, mm -hmm. free diagnosis, for the minor disease, mm -hmm. maybe blood tests or uh, so X-ray or uh, any other test that we have minor mm -hmm. issue, we can do the free of course, mm -hmm. so that it will help the patient at large, especially the poor family. Mm -hmm. It will help mm -hmm. to build up infrastructure. This is one part of the health infrastructure, okay. this Mohalla clinic. So if uh, we have an opportunity in future, mm -hmm. this is the main issue in health sector that we, that we should introduce okay. in the state of mm -hmm. Bengali. I know we have uh, financial burden if we start this, but we have to start from somewhere. We have somewhere. to start somewhere from and we have somewhere. to be able to get the money from the center. I think if it is well presented, it's sure to come. Let's come to another very... Uh, one more issue for aspirational district uh -huh. where advantages in Ribho is that in civil hospital Nongpo where we have now the centralized oxygen supply. Before okay. we don't have. Okay. Now it is for all 100 better. What about the trauma center? The trauma center is still un not functioned till now. Mm -hmm. That also is a need of an hour. But uh, for time being, the it, it, it get halt because it is been used as the COVID uh, oh, ward, exactly. COVID ward. Okay. So okay. due to COVID, it get halt. Now election also is coming. But mm -hmm. I felt that uh, Nongpo being the on the, the highway, highway. Yes. Yes. Party, yes, yes, frequent accident is happening. Mm -hmm. So trauma center has to be function mm -hmm. at the earliest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's come to a very you know, a, a hot potato issue, which is unemployment. Mm. What is your thinking? Have you done any analysis of the reason for unemployment? Is it real unemployment? Is it disguised unemployment? Or uh, what is it that prevents our youth from being gainfully employed? See, when we talk about employment, it is not only to attain government job. It is to support ourselves skill mm -hmm. development, or we have to stand on our own, our own feet. Many mm -hmm. young students who appear for government job, be it, be it DSC or MPSC mm -hmm. or police recruitment or GNM, ANM, all this also, they are frustrated because in the past we have seen too much uh, favorable by someone at the helm of a fair favoritism, to, favoritism, yeah, nepotism, to, to, to help the, yeah, the their candidate own candidates. Last, their choices. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So sometimes deserving candidate they don't have opportunity. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That is one thing. 
but now after the introduction of uh, OMR sheet in presentation mm, or, mm, I mm. think all those uh, will will do away because mm-hmm. we cannot tamper yes. the OMR sheet it will be fair yes. except for personal interview so that is one issue that we we I used to encourage our youth also population has been growing from time and again mm, mm. but the creation the sanction of more posts is very less compared mm-hmm. to the growing of population and compare with the creation of posts in different departments of mm-hmm. our state government. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So this is one of the issues that has to be looked into. Now if you see at the education sector for teachers, now whether I am right or wrong but uh, let the viewers will decide, we have seen lots of schools, we have many schools. Sometimes school with five students, mm-hmm. ten students, mm-hmm. twenty students, but sanction of post for for teachers two or three. Mm-hmm. But the ratio it should be one teacher to thirty students. Yes, yes, yes. So what I felt is that sometimes the resources that has been spent there mm-hmm. it is just a waste. Waste. If you so there is practical. need to rationalize that. Rationalize that. Mm-hmm. We have to look into this. Is a very important matter. We understand the pain for the teachers, those those who lose their job, mm-hmm. and all this. But this has to be looked. But how does this line. happen? Why does it happen? Why are you know schools created on the basis of populism, on the basis of you know politics? It's not really that a school is needed, but because some MLA feels that if I make a school there, then I can claim credit for that. I think, don't you think that this sort of policy should be abandoned? Yeah, that's true. Populism. But it is already there. School is already there now. Now you have seen, even myself, I have witnessed many schools with 20 students, 30 students. Mm-hmm. Suppose SSA. In LP, they have two sanctioned posts. Mm-hmm. In UP, they have three sanctioned posts, apart from the four teachers. Okay. Now, suppose uh, in UP, student total students are 30. Teachers are three. Mm-hmm. The student ratio and the teachers don't match. Mm-hmm. Student has to be more than ninety. Yes. So this also it is an issue where we have. We but don't is have it quality is it going to be easy to tackle this to do the rationalization? We have to try. It's a strong. Some, it's, it's it's a strong policy measure. It has to be now. The state government education department have started to rationalize. Okay. That's mm-hmm. why many school mm-hmm. now with the teachers who have been retired or they resign, mm-hmm. they have not filled up the post due to that. Okay. That is the main okay. reason. Even government of India also, mm-hmm. they, they are following mm-hmm. up this issue because they know the ground reality yes, yes. what is it happening. Since you come from Riboy district where there's this contentious issue of the railways, uh, there are two views on the railways. The general populist view is that if the railways come, there will be influx. But there is also the other economic view that railways will make a lot of things cheaper for us, the consumers. So what have you done as an MLA of that area to convince people that we do need railways, but we have to have our safeguards? That's true. See, I'll tell you, as a legislator, people, they want it is not that everybody yes. is opposing railway. Mm-hmm. It is not that. But where is their with, voice? With, with due respect to our NGO, Sen Bhalam, mm-hmm. they are right. They are right because they are concerned. Mm-hmm. Before bringing railway, we should have mechanism okay. first to protect mm-hmm. the interests of indigenous people. Because we are all concerned. Mm-hmm. We love our land. We love our state. We love the special identity that we have through the Sikh schedule that we have our own right for the land, for the culture. Yes. So we respect that sentiment. And we already have protective mechanisms yeah, yeah. for that. Having said that, now the issue is that we should uh, have uh, the mechanism to protect first. And railway is important mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. economic growth. What is that mechanism you think that will be it's needed to protect and regulate the flow of uh, so-called influx? One of the mechanisms that has already introduced is uh, Meghalaya Resident Safety Security mm-hmm. Act. Mm-hmm. That is already there. But in 2020, there's an amendment for that. Yes. Governor has not given his assent mm-hmm. till now. Mm-hmm. This is one of the mechanisms. Because the many. governor feels that this is a 
another side of inner line permit <laughs> something like that mm -hmm. so we have our own thinking but we need this this is a very good act that has been brought in 2016 mm -hmm. i appreciate uh, this is one of the mechanism that we could check in flocks uh, especially with the railway on the car and we need railway mm -hmm. for especially for carrying goods carrying railway so that uh, material will be brought in at a cheap rate we can buy it. Mm -hmm. Do you agree that you know to create employment the state needs to have an economic policy and uh, doesn't it occur to you that in so many years Meghalaya does not have an economic policy so we don't know where we are headed we don't know where we want to be 10 years from now 15 years from now how do you propose to address that if you get back into the legislature? See, it is very important that we, any government at the helm of affairs, we should place ourselves very safely, especially with financial implication, allotment of fund and all. It is very true that the economic policy has to be there. Expert has to be brought in. Mm -hmm. See, Economists, there are many economists who have done very well in other states also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In other states, even in our country also. So our state, Meghalaya also, we have to follow the example that has been led by other states also. We have to incorporate with expert, economic expert for economic policy so that we could place ourselves. So we have to understand how much the state is earning mm -hmm. through to the resources, the tax, the non-tax and all. And at the same time, we have to understand where to spend. Because sometimes unnecessary spending just to, like now also you have seen, the, there are many policy or many scheme that it is unnecessary. It, unnecessary, it looks like a one-off kind of thing. Yeah, like that. It's not a, you know, long term. It is not permanent. Yes, not See, long now term. there are issues that have been brought into scheme, personal benefit mm -hmm. uh, to the people at large. I'm not saying that it is wrong, it is right, but not for a long run. Yes. You cannot yes. feed each and every one every yeah. month. Yes, and every not year. especially cash, uh, you know, cash distribution. That, it may be just before election yes. or maybe for one month, two months, six mm -hmm. months, one year. Yes. But you cannot feed each and every one for 10 years, yes. 15 years. Mm -hmm. So we have to look for another policy. This is like giving people fish instead mm -hmm. of teaching them to fish. It's like that. Mm -hmm. Just to make them smile for some mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. And after that, they will But be people, why is it that people do not, you know, they don't make a noise in this state. People don't speak up. People don't make an issue of anything. See, people of our state, we are peace-loving people. That is the nature of Kasi people. We are like that. We don't want to argue. We don't want to raise our voice. We don't want to... But then what happened on 28? There was no... That, <laughs> that is different. I'm not saying all. I'm not saying all are like that. Mm -hmm. See, now if we compare about price rise, suppose tomato or cooking gas, Yes. if it has been raised, say, 100 rupees or 50 rupees, Nobody, Nobody sp speaks. If you go to the plane, you will see you know, one rupee, two yes. rupees, of power, so people will come to the street. These are all issues that we relate every day. You know? Everybody mm -hmm. needs cooking gas, everybody yes. needs potato, how, rice. How is, how is the spread of that Ujala scheme, cooking gas scheme in your area? Yeah, they are, they are beneficiaries who are benefit from are they, are they? But are they taking the LPG regularly with the, the price having gone up to... Yeah, those, who, much, can, no? those who can afford, they are taking. Okay. But many have left. left. They have uh, do away. Yes. That is the fact. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Many beneficiaries uh, consume. So oil. if they are not using cooking gas, then they must be still relying on firewood? Firewood or kerosene mm -hmm. stove or many on firewood mm -hmm. in the rural area. Yes. What are your views on the inner line permit? See, inner line permit... Isn't this is just an election issue <laughs> or... Long pending demand since 1978, if I'm not wrong, this issue has been lingering around. Any contentious issues, be it ILP, be it border, be mm -hmm. it CAA, merit, demerit will always be there. Yes. There is no issue that you will have all positive view, mm -hmm. positive mm -hmm. inputs or True. positive ramification. Merit, demerit will always be there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
the one side of the coin, yes. it is benefit. On the other side of the coin, it may not. How affected are you by this border resolution between Assam and Meghalaya? See, this is a long pending issue and it is a contentious issue that has been lingering around as a legislator and as a member in the regional committee. But one day we have to take a call. That is the fact. Mm -hmm. But we have to take a call keeping in mind that we should not forget the interests of the indigenous people, especially when we talk about border. We should not forget that the baseline should be the Para 20, Para 20 of the sixth schedule mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. the Constitution of mm -hmm. India. If we deviate from there, then we are going to lose more land. Mm -hmm. Land is precious. Yes. Everybody yes, loves it, even in our family, in our compound. Mm -hmm. Suppose uh, PWD will come and construct a road, they will say, give us one feet of your boundary. It is very difficult to yes, keep. Yes. So it is the same emotional No, issue. so are you uh, in agreement with what is happening now in the, I mean, vis-a-vis -vis Assam? Are you in agreement with the, the you know, the demarcation of borders now, the de new demarcation? See, I have said merit, demerit will be there. Mm -hmm. But one day we have to take a call. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now it has been 50 years we have to get our statehood. Okay. So we have to take our sixth area of difference has been agreed upon, mm -hmm. MOU has been signed. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you that uh, keeping in mind that it is very important that any area that we are going to claim, keeping in mind we have to see at the very important issue that is the settlement. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Who are the settlement yes. of that particular area? Yes, yes. This is very important issue, yes. keeping in mind. Because For example, when, when we look at the areas there, it seems to me that uh, there's more of the Nepali population, Garbi population that have. It come depends in. on certain area. Yeah, certain like area. Langpi, many are Nepalese. Mm -hmm. And then uh, in Boklapara area, just uh, maybe Rabha, Amu, mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. Garo, our Garo friend also are there, Rabaha are there. There are some villages which is 100% Rabaha also. Okay. So we have to very uh, serious on this issue that whichever village or... Uh, so where are those people voting as of now? Most of the places they have vote. In, yeah. in vote? Oh. In right Nongtung, I'll tell you, this it falls in block two. They have a big both side. It's like that. Mm -hmm. In Langpi, you'll go like that. They enjoy benefit from both sides. But side. are those people willing to come to Meghalaya? That it depends when we'll go at the ground. As far as uh, I'm concerned for the particular area in Ribhoi, mm -hmm. in first phase, we have uh, Boklapara sector and Pilangata Kanapara sector. Okay. These uh, two uh, sector that has been done in the first phase. Mm -hmm. They also, we have witnessed... Uh, the willingness of the people at large. Mm -hmm. Many, they want to be with Meghalaya. Few, they want to be with Assam. So it depends, we have to take into consideration the settlement. Yes. Who settled there? That is very important. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Otherwise, unnecessary, one day you will claim the area where the settlement is not indigenous people of the state. It will be a problem in the future. Mm -hmm. So we have to take into consideration okay. this also. So, uh in this regional committees, are the SAMs, the Rangba Ashnongs all involved? Stakeholders, yes. Stakeholders. In the first phase, uh, in the meeting, uh, the committee has called the stakeholder, the mm -hmm. state council, mm -hmm. the Hima, Rangba Ashnong, the Raj and all. There has been a consultation, continuous consultation. Mm -hmm. But as I have said, this is a contentious issue, so merit, demerit will always be there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There are places where the Raj may felt that no, we should not lose this land because we love our land. But if you go on the ground, it is a different scenario. Mm -hmm. The settlement is different. So mm -hmm. you have to look at both sides of the coin. In one of the assembly sessions, you had raised this point about a medical college in Ribhoi. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, is that just a populist demand or <laughs> no, 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 is it something demand. not uh, achievable, mm. you just <laughs> raised it or what is it? No, no, see, I, 
I remember the famous quote of Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. Mm -hmm. I have a dream. Okay. <laughs> in 1963, mm -hmm. where he, he quote, I have a dream that my four little children will live in a country where they will not be judged by the color of their, their skin. skin, they will be judged by the content of their character. He has a dream to bring a part for his uh, people that time and they are now. Mm -hmm. I have a dream that Riboy district, being an aspirational district, should have one medical college. We don't and even we, we don't even have one. In the state. <laughs> yeah. They may they may tell me in Kasimu Pratari Club. I'm shouting in the wilderness. The wilderness. Maybe yes. like that. But Rivoi district it is an aspirational district. Even in the guidelines mm -hmm. of aspirational district all over India, out of hundred and fifteen district that has been identified. Now you see Assam. Mm -hmm. Just last year they have got sanctioned one medical college in Dhubri district. Now they are going to get in Hailakandi, next district in Assam. Mm -hmm. Riboy district also being an only aspirational district in Meghalaya, we have a chance, an opportunity to have a medical. This is all been born, will be born by central government, not by state yes, government. Yes, yes. Then why is so we there have no a chance. why and is there no push for that? I, I have been writing since 2019, 20 COVID has come in 2020. Again, I've been writing so many letters. Honorable CM, Health Minister, Chiefs get three to pursue. It gets stuck in planning. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm in opposition, so nobody will hurt That's me. why now you want to be in the ruling. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's too late. Too late now to pursue this matter. So I hope that by God's grace, uh, by the law for the people at large, if we have the opportunity to be at government, for Rivoy District especially, this is very important. See, once we have a medical college owned by the government, means the people's mm -hmm, college, mm -hmm. then it will create opportunity for employment. Yes. It create opportunity for, for students from our state for study to pursue MBBS mm -hmm. and other medical courses. So mm -hmm. it is very important. Mm -hmm. So that's why I always stress on this, that because we are eligible. It is not that we are not eligible. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Aspirational district, it is eligible. Just last year, out of 75 medical college sanctioned by government of India, 40 of them have been sanctioned in aspirational district. Okay. So why not in Rivoy? Yes, yes. If Reverend Martin Luther King in 1963, he, his dream come true, so I'm not wrong to say one day that you will have we did, a medical college. It will stand. Okay. As long as Rivoy district is regarded as aspirational district. Okay. If it is not, then the story no, but, ends there. But why does it have to be an aspirational district to get something? That is in the criteria framed by Niti Ayo. Mm -hmm. Aspirational, they, they select the district, backward district, mm -hmm. who need to get more attention, okay. health, education, other skill development. Because you also uh, have an airport in the region, in your region, in your district. Uh, why is it that it is not functioning to the optimum? See, uh, Umroy Airport, where we call Shillong Airport, uh, now we have seen government is trying to explore another, another location, location for airport and all. But what I'm saying, if the this, uh, the place, that uh, present airport is feasible to make it bigger, so we should improve the one improve we already that, have. Yes, because why you've to invested. Spend, yeah, why to spend more money, thousand and thousand mm -hmm. crores of money to spend? We, why not uh, make it better, the present that we have, the yes. present one? Mm -hmm. If the, the place is uh, suitable to... Are you being consulted when government is looking around for land, for an airport? Are you being consulted as... No. No, no, I'm not a local MLA of that area. And no, no, in but you, side, are, you are from the region, no, from that region. No, no, no. no. nobody consult. So I'm this, this, this consultation uh, culture is not there, I think, in Meghalaya. I'm not aware about the <laughs> new airport. I just heard, but I'm not consulted. Yes, I'm yes. aware that it will be there. The mm -hmm. government have mm -hmm. trying to search mm -hmm. new airport, which is very important. It Connectivity is. is very important. Yes, yes. Nowadays, we know. Mm -hmm. It is easy to fly, tourists will come, will mm -hmm. flow in our state, it will increase revenue of the state, mm -hmm. people at large, because once tourism will grow, I'll tell you, Kong, apart from hospitality, the one who will be benefited is the small, small shopkeepers yes. who are there in those tourist spots, and mm -hmm. they will earn more. Mm -hmm. Not a, a small, small shop, and those okay. will sell biscuits, sell tea, yes. they will sell handicraft, they mm -hmm. will sell clothes, they mm -hmm. will sell traditional. Material. So they'll find a market. Yeah, yeah. Just like that. 
Okay, I think uh, we have reached the end of our conversation with you. Thank you very much for being very upfront with us in this upfront program. And we wish you all the best and hope that you get back into the assembly and pursue your dreams like Martin Luther one King issue, Jr. One issue come before you conclude. Uh, this is a message to our youth of our state that let us, uh, let us try to save. Saving is very important. Because nowadays, young people, they forget about saving. Savings. Saving, I'm not saying only about saving money in a bank, in saving account. Mm -hmm. It is not only that. That also is important, mm -hmm. that we should save. Save environment, oh. save nature, save trees, save the land, save the soil. We should try to learn to save. Okay. This is very important uh, issue that as a youth of the state, we have to save. Mm -hmm. Save our nature, save our state, save Jai Bindriu. Yes. This is the thing that it has to be there in the mind of each and every one of us. But that save should be in a positive manner. Positive Not manner. by beating up people. No, no. <laughs> I'm fully, I'm, I, I, I don't endorse. Yes. That is very unfortunate and uncalled for. Mm -hmm. That what has happened. happened. Yes. So we, we don't support those mm -hmm. kind of issues. Mm -hmm. And we hope that with the youth of our state, we will come together to push forward and I hope in next assembly it will be the 11 legislative assembly yes. of the state where we would see that Kasi language will be uh, in the recognized eight schedule. in the 8th yeah. schedule of the constitution. Okay. That is very important because mm -hmm. for the youth of our state it will relate with employment, yes. it will relate with so many things in our state mm -hmm. for the benefit of each and every one of us. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. So viewers, you have heard young MLA, Mr. Meral Bonsim, speaking from his heart. We hope you will watch this program and future programs as well. Thank you very much.